Hello everyone, my name is Chris Lewis. I am a Transportation Safety Specialist for the Greater Cleveland Regional Transit Authority. I have been a Safety Specialist now for over 20 years. Some of the things that you do as a safety professional are accident investigations, safety audits, the development of standard operating procedures, also development of training programs, and conducting the training to all levels of employees to your company. We also work very closely to federal and state agencies, such as OSHA, which we're going to talk about later on, which is the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Also, the Environmental Protection Agency and the Department of Transportation, DOT, and the Federal Transportation Administration, just to name a few that we do work with. Well, today I'm here to talk to you a little bit about OSHA the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, and the beginnings stages of that agency, and also why it was developed. Now, on December 29, 1970, President Richard Nixon signed and put into law the Occupational Safety and Health Act of 1970. The reason why this was passed was to prevent the workers from being killed and seriously harmed at work which then gave the responsibility to the employers to provide a safe work environment. This, in turn, did create OSHA, which is the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, on April 28, 1971. This set and forces protective workplace safety and health standards. They also provide information, training, and assistance to employers and their workers. Now, since uh, OSHA was established, Federal OSHA, along with their state partners, there are approximately about 2,200 inspectors, which are responsible for the health and the safety of over 130 million workers, employed at more than 8 million work sites around our nation, which translates to about one compliance officer for every 59,000 workers. Now, a lot the Federal OSHA, along with their state partners, conduct on an average of 93,000 inspections. Now, they may came out, come out to an inspection uh, on a random basis, or there was a complaint, or there was some type of serious accident or a fatality. Now, when it comes to their inspections, there are the top 10 uh, standards that are violated. One of them is scaffolding, which is in the construction industry. Another is fall protection, also in the construction industry, which is the use of personal protective equipment on the workers to prevent them from falling and getting injured or possibly dying. Also, hazard communication. Hazard communication is the standard uh, to inform workers of any type of hazardous chemicals they may be working with and what protections they need to take. The next one, number four, is the respiratory protection. That's any type of respirators that someone may need because they're in hazardous environments where there may be uh, poisonous or toxic fumes or vapors. Number five is the control of hazardous energy, which is considered lockout tagout, which means that it is there to protect workers when they are working or setting or adjusting machinery to lock out the power so it does not accidentally be activated to cause any type of injury or death. Next, there's electrical wiring is also things that are wired wrong or wired improperly. Also, powered industrial trucks. You, which you may know more as forklifts, uh, tow lifts, anything that is moving product of some sort. There's a lot of different types of accidents and deaths that are caused by powered industrial trucks. Also ladders in the construction industry, people who are using ladders improperly or the proper ways of getting into a higher elevation. Also electrical design systems is number nine things that are designed improperly when it comes into electrical wiring. And number 10 is machine guarding. Machine guarding is the standard that is there to protect workers who are operating 
a manufacturing type of machine, any type of metal stamping, protecting them from the movement parts of the machine so to prevent them from being injured from that machine or possibly killed. Now, just to let you know, just last year in 2011, 4,609 workers were killed on the job. That breaks down to 3.5 people for every 100,000 full-time workers. Break it down even further, that is 90 people per week that were killed at work site on the job, which comes down to 13 people a day are killed on work-related uh, injuries that cause their death. Now, every day in America, there are 13 people who go to work and never come home. Every year, nearly 4 million people suffer a workplace injury from which some will never recover. These are preventable tragedies that disable over workers and devastate their families and damage our economy. <coughs> Now, since 1970, since the Occupational Safety and Health Act was passed, fatalities have dropped by 65%. Occupational injuries and illnesses have dropped by 67%. At the same time, the U.S. employment has doubled. Now, back in 1970, there, uh, the average was 38 workers died per day and today, in 2011, 13. When it came to injuries and illnesses, there were, in 1972, 10.9 per 100 workers were injured or suffered an illness, and today it's four per every 100 workers. Now, in conclusion, I would like to say in the past 40 years, with the Occupational Safety and Health Act of 1970, along with OSHA and all the safety professionals, uh, and the strong enforcement, training, and outreach and compliance assistance, we have saved thousands of lives and have prevented countless numbers of injuries. Even though the fatality rate in the United States is down to 13 workers' deaths per day, which is a great improvement, but there's still, that is still 13 too many deaths. So there is a lot of improvement to go on along with OSHA and the safety professionals.